You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Portal opened up on Tuesday. Four LSU players are in the portal. Jackson Howard in the portal. Uh, we learned Kai Preen, Connor Gilbreth, Ryan Robinson, all in the portal if you've been following the numbers. Again, last week, our very unofficial count. Tigers were at 88. They needed to lose three more to get to 85. They've done that now. But if you want to add more, you got to subtract. And look, Brian Kelly has said flatly and on the record, like, they're going to add at one position in particular. Brian, as you go into the offseason, like you said, kind of evaluating this roster, other than maybe defensive tackle, other positions that y'all might target in the transfer portal? I don't, I don't see any other positions that we need to be in the transfer portal for other than the defensive tackle position, really. Well, there is one potentially, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, when you look at defensive tackle as a whole, you are losing your most productive player at defensive tackle who a year ago was was Jordan Jefferson and then you're losing Guillory and Smith who are probably your highest draftable players as we well know and so not just um does say Guillory and Smith the Guillory's coming back you're losing Mason Smith and Makai Wingo forgive me if I misspoke there but Jacoby and Guillory is coming back as a fifth year player and listen Brian Kelly raved about Jacoby and Guillory or earlier in spring, and that's something to be really optimistic about. In terms of stopping the run, Jacoby and Guillory has been outstanding. I mean, he is, he's singularly been, I think, in terms of what Bo Davis is looking for, he's been outstanding, and he's been a stalwart. we got to find the other guy, and that's what we're looking for. We're de trying to develop that second guy, and, and then we'll have some depth guys behind him. So who's the second guy? That's, that's the big question right now for LSU. Look, Jalen Lee, you brought in a year ago from Florida. Uh, you brought in Jordan Jefferson a year ago. You know that as well. But a year ago, when LSU was going into the portal looking at tackle, it was it was adding numbers. Like, you had to add bodies a year ago. You got Jordan Jefferson. You got Jalen Lee. You added Paris Shand, who played inside and out. Again, a year ago, it was about you added Braden Swinson at end. You needed bodies. You needed warm bodies at that position, right? Right now, I can run through what LSU's got on the defensive line, just on the interior, and you have enough bodies. But now you do. Well, you will in the fall because you've got the two freshmen coming in with Dominic McKinley and Demyron Johnson. So you've got Jacoby and Guillory. you got Jalen Lee. You moved Kimo Macaneoli over there. You, you've added Gio Paez from Wisconsin. you got Sean Washington as well, the JUCO. That's five. And then the two freshmen I just mentioned, that gets you seven. You had seven interior defensive linemen. You got enough bodies right now. So you're not trying to add numbers. But what Brian Kelly said there is we're looking for the other guy. Or we're looking for the other starter next to Guillory. Well, you're going to do that in the portal. And, you know, I've, I've gone through this and I mentioned it to you on Tuesday when the portal opened. But my understanding is initially, anyway, there are three initially, and I think that list is probably growing. But what I was told was, we, we one of them we know, which is Philip Bleedy. Philip Bleedy, who's the defensive lineman from uh, Indiana, who was at LSU a week ago for a visit. Uh, Bleedy's the guy who's a fifth-year player, started his career at Texas Tech, spent this past year at Indiana, and married two kids. He's a full-grown man, and he's looking for an opportunity to play one more year of college football. So that's one of the three. The other two that I was told were, were a couple of G5 players, group, group of five players, one of them with ties to Louisiana. Well, one of those G5 players has announced himself uh, LSU's interest. That's C.J. West. So C.J. West, who's out of Kent State, uh, tweeted that LSU offered. Now, uh, everybody else has offered C.J. West as well. If you go look at C.J. West's uh, Twitter, it's nothing but a long stream of, of programs that have, that have offered. Indiana offered. Um, Rutgers has offered. Miami. K-State. 
Colorado, Wisconsin. I mean, it's just a long list of uh, Arkansas, still going, A&M, Michigan. Like everybody, this is the guy right now, Cal. This is the guy, C.J. West, that everybody right now is offering on the defensive line. It's very much akin to what happened a year ago with Braden Fisk. You know, G5 guy who was at Western Michigan, wasn't highly recruited coming out of high school, had a really good career at Western Michigan, then everybody wanted him. He landed at Florida State. That's C.J. West this year. Four years at Kent State, played in 36 games, and he's been a good player with a good push on the interior. In his career, 110 tackles, 19 and a half TFLs, seven sacks. By comparison, just look at Jalen Lee, right? So Jalen Lee, LSU brought in from Florida a year ago, another fifth year guy going to his fifth year. West, who we're talking about from Kent State, has played in 36 games. Lee has played in 32. So comparable number of games played. 110 tackles to 21. 19 and a half TFLs to three. Seven sacks to one. This has been a mighty productive player at the G5 level that everybody wants on the interior of their defensive line for his final year of college eligibility. The big difference between Fisk a year ago and C.J. West now is a year ago, LSU in the portal flat got outbid by Florida State. I've gone through it. LSU's got the money in the portal right now with their collective to make sure that doesn't happen this year. So if there's a player they want and it comes down to a dollar amount, LSU ain't going to lose that this year. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate for those who haven't heard me say it. Brian Thomas Jr., Makai Wingo, Mason Smith, each of them was offered half a million dollars by LSU's collective to return for 2024. Each of them passed. That freed up at least $1.5 million that they were thinking was going to be allocated for those players. So you've got at least that money, and they've fundraised beyond that as well, as Gordon and others have told us. So... LSU is in a much different position this year in this portal cycle than they were a year ago. So CJ West is one of them. That's one of the names. We know Philip Bleedy from Indiana is the other uh, who has already been named. And there's another player with ties to the state of Louisiana who I'd rather not be the one to, to name that name. But when, if and when that comes out, we'll certainly talk about it. But those are three. Now, remember what Brian Kelly said. We're looking for the other guy. You're looking for the other starter. So as it was very implicitly expressed to me, LSU is looking for starting caliber defensive linemen, okay? Not guys that are coming in that are bodies like a year ago because you had to bolster your numbers. It's someone that can come in and start for you. Line up next to Jacoby and Guillory and be a day one starter, a one-year mercenary. And when you look right now, ESPN with the um, has ranked – the players in the portal. Caden Proctor is number one. We know he's going back to Alabama. Number two is Damian Martinez, the running back transferring out of Oregon State. Number three is Dayon Hayes. He's a defensive lineman from Pittsburgh. Ding, ding, ding. And then Dominic Williams, defensive tackle from TCU. They have listed as the fourth best player in the portal any position. He's got one, he was a four-star recruit coming out of California. Depending on, on the... The recruiting service. Um, I saw him at on three as a three star. He was the number fifty five defensive lineman in the country. So not a guy that had you know huge interest coming out of high school, but a guy that has been a two year starter at TCU was a start started all fifteen games as a freshman on that team that played for the national championship and started all thirteen games this past year at TCU. So he's been a two year starter. They have him listed as the fourth best player any position in the portal. ESPN does. That's the kind of player that LSU is going to be in the mix for. Now, I don't know if it's going to be Dominic Williams. I don't know if it's going to be C.J. West, Philip Bleedy, a, a combination of a couple of those guys. I, I don't know how it's all going to land, but what, I, what I'm confident in saying is that LSU has put themselves in a position where they have a need at that position, they are going hard after that position, and... They got money to spend to where if there's someone who's only seeking a, a, a paycheck for a year before they go off to the next level, LSU's got a lot to offer. Financially, play in the SEC at a place like LSU, you can come in and start. All those opportunities are there, and that's some of the guys that you need to be keeping an eye on right now. So as this moves along, we'll talk more and more about it. I know the other position that was expressed to me implicitly that if there's a starter, again, not a body, 
a starter that LSU would take, it would be at cornerback. And everybody's mentioned Kermani McLean, who's the he was a five star, is a top twenty player overall in the country a year ago out of Colorado. And Cormani McLean hit the portal. I know Shea Dixon earlier today tweeted that McLean um, would not be a target for LSU. And I think the reason to keep in mind um, something like that is because Cormani McLean is a guy that, yes, he was highly re- regarded coming out of high school as a five star. Um, you know, he's a top 20 overall player in the country, and he's entering the transfer portal. But last year at Colorado, tell me if this sounds familiar. Um, he. Dion he did not see the field early on. Dion told reporters that the freshman needed to do more to get on the field. Ended up seeing action in just nine games. He did start four, just 13 tackles. Does that sound familiar? Five star, super highly recruited, a guy that needed coaches needed to see him do more. When he got on the field, it didn't really perform. It's the Denver Harris story. Like that's that's what it is. So when LSU is talking about who they might add in the portal on the defensive side, it ain't just because he had five stars next to his name. They want guys that are, that is a, he, they want someone who's a starter. Jark Bernard Converse was a four year starter at Oklahoma State who came in and was an immediate starter for you. You find that guy in the portal, they might be interested. But defensive tackle is the absolute must. It's a few of the guys that they're keeping an eye on, so we'll continue to follow it as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.